Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is freedom doing whatever I want? We're going to talk about freedom according to the teachings of the Catholic Church. Stay tuned. Hi, I am El Señor Moreno. If you are new here, welcome. And please consider to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and bell icon to receive notifications and new videos. Upon this tube is a lay apostolic Catholic channel focused on the teachings of the Catholic Church's doctrines. Okay, that's nice, but what is true freedom? True freedom is not doing whatever you want to do. True freedom is doing what you ought to do. It's the freedom to do what one must do in pursuit of a virtuous life, a life lived well with reason, courage, love, and mercy. And what is that? God's will. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraphs 1730 through 1733 states, quote, Man is rational and therefore like God. He is created with free will and is master over his acts. Freedom is the power, rooted in reason and will, to act or not to act, to do this or that, and so to perform deliberate actions on one's own responsibility. By free will one shapes one's own life. Human freedom is a force for growth and maturity in truth and goodness, it attains its perfection when directed toward God, our beatitude. As long as freedom has not bound itself definitively to its ultimate good which is God, there is the possibility of choosing between good and evil, and thus of growing in perfection or of failing and sinning. This freedom characterizes properly human acts. It is the basis of praise or blame, merit or reproach. The more one does what is good, the freer one becomes. There is no true freedom except in the service of what is good and just. The choice to disobey and do evil is an abuse of freedom and leads to the slavery of sin. The easiest analogy I can give is this one. Suppose that Mr. Jones has high cholesterol and he eats a connoisseur of tasty cheeseburgers. He loves them. Suppose that you put in front of him an excessive number of cheeseburgers. He will want to eat all those cheeseburgers, even though they are not good for him. If he eats them all, knowing that eating that stuff will lead him to his death, then he's not free. Again, God has given us the freedom so that we can willingly choose to return his love and love our neighbor as God loves us, as we love ourselves. With wisdom. True freedom is having the freedom to donate yourself freely, to have the freedom to follow the Lord, or fulfills His will, to fulfill God's commandment. Only then will you have the spiritual strength that is needed to do what you ought to do. You will have the strength to love God with your whole mind, heart, and strength. You will have then the spiritual strength to love your neighbor, the person that is next to you or near you, with the strength that is needed to love yourself as God loves you. And you will be able to say, I am not going to eat that massive amount of cheeseburgers. <laughs> My cholesterol is skyrocketing. If you're not free, that means that you're a slave to sin. Notice that Christ insists to the point. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, a young man tells Jesus that he has been following a good life, but he wants to know how to be the perfect man, how to reach perfection. Jesus loves him, and he says to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. If you don't have the freedom to follow the Lord, you are a slave to sin. Remember, we have free will. We are gifted with the freedom to make choices. And often, what we decide is actually bad for us. Often, we choose it anyway, knowing full well that the choice is harmful to our being, our soul, and by extension, the well-being of our family and neighbors. Why do we make these harmful choices? Because we're human. And because we turn from God, we do that all the time. Because we fall into our human weakness, 
because we fall into the temptations of this world, because we are broken, we are imperfect. Anyone who has a life experience can recognize this easily. It is with God, through the Holy Spirit, that we find the strength and courage to reject the enticements of this world, the enticements of the prince of this world, to reject enslavement to sin. Let me give you another example. Suppose that someone hurts you very badly, even violently. What do you want to do? Maybe you want to get a baseball bat and smash the person's skull. If you do that, you go to prison. Our legal system follows the Judeo-Christian tradition that tells you that we cannot do what we want to do, but that we ought to do what we must do for our good and the greater good. What does Jesus say about this? Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 through 48 says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If one slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap your left cheek too. But you may say, what is that supposed to be meaning? Am I supposed to be a passive victim? Come on, abuse me. Is that what Jesus means? No. Jesus explains for this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, 48. You have heard that it was said, love your friends, hate your enemies. But now I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may become the children of your Father in heaven. Be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So what happens when a police officer unfairly kills, murders an African-American citizen? Do they respond with thoughtless rage? Do they run out and burn down the police station and then the other police station and eventually all police stations? Do they further feed my rage? Do they burn businesses? But my anger is just. Well, but what do you think Jesus Christ says? What did we read about Christ saying? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If you do what Christ wants, you will be feeling the pain of not doing what you want to do, what you desire to do. It's painful. It is like you are offering the other cheek. When you pray for anyone who is unlovable, you are giving to Jesus your desires. You are actually turning the other cheek to have your ones crucified on Jesus' cross. You are carrying your cross and you are being transformed by the love of Christ as Christ died on the cross that our sins may be forgiven and that we may be granted a path to eternal life. You, Christ-like, you must carry your cross that your sins and your sins may be forgiven. You are carrying your cross. You are being transformed by the love of Christ as Christ died on the cross that our sin may be forgiven. So we must do the same thing. It's the only way that leads to eternal life. You must carry your cross. We must carry our cross so that our sins may be forgiven. Thus, this is the only way to really truly share in the passion of Christ. You are forging your way towards eternal life and leading others with you by example. And yes, it is painful, but you won't be doing Satan's work, which is that work that denies Christ and causes the kind of destruction that leads to death and hell. Crime and sin are not going to stop because the police station is on fire or because the police station is defunded. So now I will have no police officer stamping into that apartment where that man is engaging in domestic violence, beating his girlfriend to a pulp. Is that good or wise or just? Doing what one wants, following impulse, lacking self-control, is to become a slave to sin. You will become a slave to uncontrolled feelings, the raw ingredients of anger. Christ tells us, anger is a desire for revenge. Let's take them and give them to Jesus. The Lord says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. And the Holy Spirit said through the mouth of St. Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 19, Beloved, do not look for revenge, but leave room for the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 21, Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. So freedom is correcting wrongs while aiming at doing anything that is possible to save the decaying soul of the person who is guilty of hurting someone very badly. God wants to save the bastard as much as he wants to save you. The evil person you want to pray for is also a patient that God wants to save. In Mark chapter 2, verse 17, Christ says, those who are well do not need the physician, but the sick do. I didn't come to call the righteous but sinners. So what is true freedom? True freedom is choosing to donate yourself freely, with free will, 
to follow the Lord and fulfill God's commandments, doing what He wants and not what we want. Also, the Holy Spirit says through the mouth of St. Paul in Galatians chapter 5, For you were called for freedom, brothers, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's why we pray every day, Thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This is it, my dear audience. God love you all. I am El Señor Moreno.